Mic check one two, mic check one two. What's going down? YouTube, you know what it is. Hold up. Back with another tutorial. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and get into it. Uh, I'm basically reviewing a new, well, it's not really new. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's 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 a vintage piece of a vintage piece. This is the Mini Moog. I've been corrected too many times because I like to call it the Moog. I remember we had the Mooger Fuger. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the Moog, uh, Mini Moog, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty dope app. It's a remake, a rewire or a app version of an actual piece of hardware uh, that you can grab on your iPad now or your iPhone. And so I thought that uh, this piece of tech right here would be uh, excellent to review. And so, um, yeah, a lot of knobs, a lot of bells, a lot of whistles, a lot of lights. <laughs> so, um, First thing you need to do this uh, particular piece of software the right way, um, you need a, I would say you need an Akai PK Mini, but you can use any uh, MIDI controller, even a drum controller if you uh, put it in the uh, synchronous mode with it, pads, play keys. Um, uh, the word for it is chromatic, uh, because the keys go in a chromatic way. Now, you can't just plug your mini in. I have the Retro Nims wedge over there, Bluetooth to the iPad. And so basically what you need to do once you get your, uh, wedge synced up, which you could plug directly into the iPad, but you know. Shout out to Retro Nams. Um, I'm gonna go into my settings cog real quick. I'm gonna go to MIDI, and I need to go to Bluetooth MIDI. The wedge is recognized. It says one device found, not connected. We're gonna connect real quick. Bing, bing. And once we get connected, we'll see we have the wedge on input and output, right? All right. We'll close the settings menu. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to end. Um, all I know is uh, this is a really kind of like solemn uh, tutorial for me because the guy that invented the Moog, uh, he's no longer with us. And so this is a person who dedicated his life to electricity and modulating that through sound, uh, creating waves, um, bending sounds, creating signals, bending signals, and all these different things, man. So uh, he definitely made the music community, society, and the world a better place, especially the 80s. <laughs> 80s music is full of modes. All right, so... Um, where to begin so the first thing I want to point out is that you have several menus your brain automatically goes to the knobs it's like oh my god what is all of this um, hmm the the menus at the top are a good place to start but uh, one thing I want to point out is uh, that you can go to configuration um, and uh, you can uh, basically set up your Ableton link. Um, you can uh, reduce the signal processing. Um, there's all different types of things that you can do. Um, you have uh, an advanced setup where you can, uh, I mean, it's so much, y'all. <laughs> I just suggest that you download it um, and uh, mess around with it. Uh, you can, uh, change the pitch range of the uh, wheel um, and as you can see here bottom of the screen when I go left right it changes the pitch 
when I go up and down, it changes the modulation. And so it's automatically mapped out. Um, when I go to MIDI, uh, another thing that I can do is I can map out the actual knobs themselves to my controller um, or whatever your controller is. As you can see, some of them are already mapped out. Um, that's dope. Um, I think I may have to do two parts to this video. But uh, once you get past the internal uh, things behind the scenes, the guts, and get everything synced up, uh, you can scroll through your sounds here with the arrow or your menus. Um, you have a share button where you can save presets you can share to uh, your friends and family. You can undo, redo. Uh, you have an effects window. Uh, you got an arpeggiator, a bender, delay, looper, play button. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, your tempo. I'm sure you can buy more sounds. And of course, your configuration cog. You dig. Uh, once I click on the first tab here, which is bass, there's different types of basses. So we'll go to the A or bass. That's what the A or bass sounds like. Uh, we'll go to bass 145. And of course, if you don't have a, a MIDI controller, um, you um, can definitely uh, just use the keys on the screen you can scroll through the octaves or if you have a controller i can just go up a couple octaves and then i can play the higher notes just depends on you know what your situation is um if i go back here let's just say i would like a lead sound which is what Moog is like really dope for it's a really like spacey type lead but what's really dope is um you can go into the uh controllers the oscillator bank the mixer and the modifiers here and you can change these uh parameters to create a totally different sound you can sync a delay to a different or to your tempo and uh, yeah, let's just kind of tweak around for a little bit. Let's change this oscillator. Gives it a little deeper tone. Let's give it a little more. Totally different sound. We'll turn the volume up here, here, and here. Let's just kind of tweak around. Alright, we'll change the cutoff frequency. And then we'll add some other things here. add some white noise my white noise is not going in let's see there we go I could add pink noise as well make it a little deeper um so uh, you have you know gang of uh, different sounds that you can work with and uh, it basically is just a dope dope piece of uh, gear uh, to use now uh, just for editing sake I'm gonna close this out you guys can see I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty I'm gonna open up Beatmaker 3 <coughs> and I'll start a new session and I'm going to open up an audio unit and then I'll use the Model D or the Moog Model D uh, as a VST.
Now, as you can see here, I have the Model D on track one. I created an audio track, not a bank, audio track. And I will set that to record. I actually set the Model D, I give myself about four. <laughs> sound let's do something else uh we'll drop this down keys i'll go ahead and go to the I go to the mini menu. I'll zoom in just a little. I'll get my pencil tool in a second. We'll draw a note here. Let's see what that sounds like. We'll take that note, oops, undo that. We'll take that note, we'll select it, we'll duplicate it, and give this that Fruity Loops <laughs> type of feel. Take that up one more, one more note. And then we'll just uh, duplicate that. And then, and you could totally, you know, record this with your keyboard if you. And just for time's sake, I'm going to drop this back to two, two bars. Actually, that's one bar. Duplicate that. All right, I'm going to run over to my mixer, right? And then I'm going to select my ins and outs. I'm going to do internal um, bus and I'm gonna bus that to an audio track start from the beginning all right so now we have two bars of the Moog as a um, wave file let's mute that unarm that and see what the audio sounds like from the beginning super clean audio so from this point i could uh start working on my counter melody um could go to another track Just pick some random drums. Okay, I need to select the right. so forth so basically um, this app is uh, pretty uh, intuitive 
um, I suggest you go ahead and download it get to tweaking and whatnot uh, yeah Arturia has some really dope apps really dope hardware uh, Sprawl Love has been another chill tutorial um, I'm gonna do another part to this this is definitely uh, not as deep as I wanted to go but uh, I'm glad I got a chance to bang this one out alright y'all holla back make sure you like comment subscribe and hit the notifications bell and select all peace